guys? Kevin Allen here from DFS Army, and this is your FanDuel NFL Week 6 first look. We're going to go through the NFL Week 6 slate on FanDuel. We're going to take a look at some of the salaries, some of the pricing, look for the bargains, who are we targeting, who are we stacking, all that good stuff. Um, love me some FanDuel. I especially love FanDuel because they continue to run what I think is the best DFS contest I've ever seen. And there are two of them. I'm showing them on screen right here. So take a look. But we've got the um, NFL rush. And it says here, top 50% paid. Understand what this contest is, guys. There is free overlay in this one. Actually, wait a minute. Hold up. 225, 246, 25, 50, 75. So 675. The overlay is gone. It's important to always look at these things and understand what we have going on. So um, this is now paying out the top 50%, 20, 225, 450, 675. So they are including 10% overlay in this one now. So the free money is gone. And we're back to paying overlay. This is much less good than it has been. But still, all right, so I'll give them this minimal bit of credit. This contest now, this $3 one is now, looks to be just about 10% overlay rather than the standard 15%. But they are no longer giving free money. Let's take a look at the at the Hail Mary. So, so just by the way, if you haven't been watching this, they've been giving free money away on FanDuel up until this point in these two contests. Let's take a look at the Hail Mary here. This is a quarter game. And let's take a look at the prizes as well. So this one is 500,000 entries, $125,000 in entry fees. And they are putting a $25,000. Uh, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Actually, this one does still have the free money. Okay, so here we go. So now um, the quarter game, which is what a lot of you guys are going to play in anyway, does still have the free money. So understand what's going on here. For 500,000, that's 25, 50, 75, 100, 125. So in this contest, they're collecting $125,000 from the entrance, but paying out 150. So the quarter game still has no overlay, uh, no, no VIG, no fees, and they're giving you $25,000 in free money. And again, this is disappointing to see. Guys, why did you do it? I've been touting you. I've been begging people to play on FanDuel because of this damn contest. No longer is it without overlay. 246, 675, 750. So they have added 10%, um, or not overlay, without, without, am I saying overlay? Without a VIG. They've added the 10% VIG to this one. So the last man standing is going to be this quarter game. Um, with that being said, Still pretty good contest. The Sunday rush, top 50% get paid, and they're only taking a 10% fee. But as you can see here, the guaranteed overlay is the thing you want to be looking for. These words and it is now down to just that one contest. Um, let me show you what happened last week, though, in the guaranteed overlay contest. DFS Freak, DFS Army member, ran the optimizer. I actually was just talking with him in the background, and he's got a great system, a lot of spreadsheets, uh, takes a lot of the data, and really is a very organized person, really impressed um with you dfs freak but was able to do a burrow chase higgins double stack for all the monies last week got on a couple of names that we were on like uh, jalen tolbert was somebody we were pushing in and of course giants defense was a was a big push from bobby wow this past week so it all came together very nicely didn't even need to smash the running backs just played you know both these running backs just did i 70k winner for DFS Freak. Beautiful. FanDuel goodness. Now, let's jump in to the matchups on FanDuel for NFL Week 6. And what I like to do is use the Domination Station Optimizer game tiles and go through each game and talk a little bit about each one of these games. So um, it is now Wednesday as I'm recording this, and we do know that Drake May will be the starting quarterback 
for the New England Patriots. That actually didn't change the line um, a little bit. I think it went up a little bit, the total. I think it was a little lower. So they did raise it just a smidge, but this game really doesn't stand out at all to me. The only thing of interest, I, I guess, would be that the Texans will be without Nico Collins. So maybe Tank Dell is somebody to keep an eye on or Stefan Diggs is like somebody who would get more targets. The um, matchup suggests that this would be a spot where Houston should be throwing more. Uh, the matchup is just the Patriots have actually been pretty good against the run relative to the pass. One of the big games of the week, Washington at the Ravens. Ravens are a 29 point team total. That's the biggest team total on the entire slate. So look for lots and lots of scoring from the Ravens offense. They're an offense that's difficult to predict, but I do think that Washington can keep up with them and make a fun game of this. So I'm interested in the Ravens offense here in general, but mostly it's just Lamar Jackson. Um, he usually gets it done. It's hard to predict where he's going with the football. Um, also, Derrick Henry, of course. Uh, on the flip side in Washington, again, Jaden Daniels, that whole crew, everybody's playable. Uh, Baltimore has been really tough to run against, so you want to throw against Baltimore. So, you know, if we, if we want to back the arm of Jaden Daniels, I think that's acceptable. We just saw last week what happened with Burrow, uh, absolutely torching this team. But Burrow's a different animal. He was at home. This is a road game for Washington, so we'll see how it goes. Um, I don't want to trust, like, what happened with Burrow is, like, something's going to happen a lot against that Ravens defense. Colts at the Titans, um, kind of a gross game here. Really not a whole lot of interest. Um, you know, wh who's going to be the quarterback for the Colts? Not sure. Um, you know, Colts defense is really bad. The, the one, uh, just terrible versus the run and the pass, but especially bad versus the run this season. So on the Titans side, I'll uh, have some interest in uh, Tony Pollard, maybe. We'll see who the running back for the Colts is as well and see if we could pick some spots out from that game. Browns at the Eagles. Eagles getting all their weapons back, but the Browns are a team that have been elite versus the pass this year and terrible versus the run. So we got to keep an eye on Saquon Barkley in a matchup of the year. My concern in this game is just that that it's just all Eagles defense and the, the Browns just can't keep up. I think this might be the game. This might be the game. I'm making a prediction. This might be the game where Deshaun Watson finally just fully implodes. I, I, I think we all know it's coming. I think we all know that. I mean, he's been imploding all season. I hope it doesn't go that way. I hope he turns it around. But he is a liability right now on the football field. We'll see. Uh, here's a fun game. Cardinals at the Packers. Packers got the big 26 and a quarter point team total here. 47 and a half point game total. So I'm interested in Love and, and his pass catchers here. Um, on the flip side, uh, the Packers are a team you can run against much more than pass against this season. So I'd be looking at maybe Jimmy Connor as the interesting play on the Cardinal side, but I usually want favored running back. So only so, so much interest there. Saints might be without Derek Carr in this game. Might be rolling with the backup quarterback. So that does not bode well for them at all. I, I would say in any way, maybe a little more Kamara action. I don't know, but um, it certainly does bode well for the Bucks, the Bucks defense, Bucks in general. And um, maybe, you know, maybe Rashad White can come back to life here. He's been terrible. Chargers at the Broncos. Um, this is a weird line. I kind of, I don't really know what to make of it. 35 and a half point total. This is a gross game. We don't want to touch it. Broncos defense going to be in play every single week of the season. Just get that out of the way. Um, so Broncos defense at home is definitely playable here. Beyond that, this game looks super gross. Nothing, nothing of interest here. Steelers at the Raiders, 36 and a half point total. Also gross. Aiden O'Connell, the starting quarterback now for the Raiders. They benched Gardner Minshew. That's worse, in my opinion. I think the Steelers wreck these guys if we get the Steelers defense in there. Great. And maybe, maybe this is that time when Najee Harris with no Jalen Warren finally pays off. Hopefully, I didn't play Najee last week. Chalk Najee is bad Najee. But if he's not going to be chalky in this one, I will actually have mild interest. Um, game of the week. One of the games of the week. Probably the game of the week. Yes, I'm going to say it. Game of the week. Lions at the Cowboys. Lions, three-point road favorites, 52-point game total in that one. This is just a sexy game. Uh, the Lions offense is one of those offenses. Hey, hey, first, let's start with the Lions defense. Lions defense stops the run, can't stop the pass. So one of the things I love about Lions games is, you know, you can target the opposing passing attack. They're like number two overall 
in DVOA against the run and their bottom of the league against the pass. You could throw against them. You can play passes. It's C.D. Lamb time. It's Jalen Tolbert time. It's Jason. It's it's Ferguson time. It's Fergie and Dak and all those guys, the pass catchers, the and the quarterback for Dallas on the on the Lions side. It could be a little bit of everything. That's one of the challenges with the Lions as an offense is they all participate. There's two great running backs in there. There's two solid wide receivers in there. There's a tight end that's elite. I mean, it's too many weapons. Too many weapons. The Lions have so many weapons. Who the hell knows who to play? And there's a reasonable chance that none of them reach tournament winning values exactly for that reason. There's just so many of them. Um, but I do like that game. We've got uh, next. Uh, so that's a game we're going to build around. I got a little sneaky one coming up at the end here. Falcons at the Panthers. Uh, Panthers still probably rolling with Andy Dalton, I think, as of right now. Uh, I think the Panthers with Dalton are going to be a more uh, formidable foe most weeks. I think the line is a little bit overdone here with the Falcons favored by six. Um, you know, Panthers defense, though, has been horrific across the board uh, versus the run and the pass. So you can do everything against them. So is this go back to Bijan? Should we take one more shot with him? I don't know. It might just be give up on Bijan time at this point, but maybe do we give him one more shot? I don't know. Um, Kirk Cousins was great last week. Can he do it again? Maybe. Mooney. Drake London all had good games. Pitts even did okay last week. But are they going to replicate what they did in a week where uh, Kirk Cousins threw for 507 yards? No. Like, that was a one-off thing. So let's not chase too much of the Falcons last week. But they're standalone. They're still a good play here. Uh, Panther side, Chuba and Deontay are the only two pieces that are really of interest outside of maybe rolling some Dalton lineups. And finally... The Bengals at the Giants, Sunday night football. I really like this game. I think this game is sneaky under the radar. Bengals coming off that monster passing game. Uh, Joe Burrow, uh, you know, setting up uh, setting up DFS freak here with an with a with a seventy k win last week. Burrow, Chase, Higgins. Could that happen again? Sure, sure. Why not? Could happen. Um, Giants defense, not very good, especially in the secondary. But what's interesting here is the Giants. Giants offense. No one likes the Giants offense. But you know what? They were on the road last week at Seattle. Didn't have Malik Neighbors. Had a good game. Um, Danny Dimes, uh, we'll point him up. Looking good out there. Uh, Giants offensive line really coming together right now. And I think they're a better team than people think. I think the quarterback is less bad than people think. And I almost, and I think we're going to maybe, possibly build a lineup around the giant stack today. So stay tuned. Oh, oh, I might get in trouble for this one. How dare you build a giant's lineup, a stack around the, the crappy giants. How dare you? That's right. That's right. I do what I want. It might happen. Stay tuned. Let's get into it. Um, remember, by the way, to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and notification bell, all that good stuff as we get into it. And a reminder, NBA is back. And a lot of you guys are DFS Army subscribers already. You subscribe for, let's say, an NFL yearly package or an NFL monthly package. Our NBA package is pretty much year-round. Um, it goes through, it's got NBA coverage, but we also have Summer League and WNBA covered in it, um, different things uh, around the year. So to celebrate the return of NBA, we're doing a... $100 off our season, her full season, 12 month package of NBA coverage covers the whole eight month long NBA season, but also some of the other secondary basketball seasons that come along some, some of the summer, summer league stuff. And of course, WNBA stuff, all that NBA 24 and promo code NBA 24 gets you a full year of NBA coverage, 12 months, 20, $249. What is that? It's like, it's like, it's like five bucks a month. It's a small number. I, I can't do the math right now, but it's like five, 10 bucks, a couple cups of coffee every month. And you get full NBA coverage. And of course, all the secondary sports um, uh, during the NBA off season that we cover. So 12 months NBA access with the discord promo code NBA 24. Do it now. This will be gone. We're not waiting. This is a one week thing. Get in there now. Okay. Wow. Kevin, NBA doesn't start for two weeks. What's the difference? It's a 12 month. It's a 12 month package. You get the whole year. Covers everything. And you won't get that chance again. Go to other sites that charge in 100 bucks a month for NBA. 
We're in a, we got the optimizer projections, cheat sheets, the best crew, uh, some of the most accurate projections in existence. By the way, we just won the award so far. Uh, our NFL, our NFL projection system has now been ranked number one overall to start to, uh, through the first five weeks, according to Daily Overlay, which is the only site out there that I know of that ranks all the DFS sites for uh, projections accuracy. We just got number one overall. I'll show. I'll show the thing in the. If you watch the uh, showdown breakdown, you'll see we'll show that. Um, that information from daily overlay. We've tweeted it out. Pretty impressive stuff. All right, let's get into NFL week six on FanDuel. And again, we might get a little crazy with the lineup that we create here. So let's jump into it. Quarterback position for NFL week six and starting at the very top. Listen, Lamar Jackson is as spectacular of a play as it's going to get. He's been great this year, averaging 26 fantasy points per game, and we get an up matchup at home for him. Everything you like. Obviously, there's a threat here of like Derrick Henry taking all the all the touchdowns or whatever, but basically this game is pretty close to lock button to produce a lot of points. Washington, Baltimore, two explosive offenses. So give me as much of this as I can get. Uh, if I'm choosing between Lamar or Jaden Daniels, I will prefer Lamar, but Lamar also does have a more dominating running back that could take a lot of the work. Still, I think there'll be enough to go around here. So if we want to pay all the way up for Lamar Jackson, 9,500, just keep in mind, let's do the math. On, on FanDuel, we've got a 3X salary in order to sort of deliver value. So you're looking about a, a 28, 29 pointer from Lamar to get you in that place where you're happy with. And I certainly think that's within the realm of stuff that he could do. Ideally, we're probably looking at more of a 32 to 35 type score for this price to make it pay off but worth it. The one thing about Lamar Jackson, though, is he's not the easiest player to stack. What I mean by that is last week, for example, he threw, I think, two touchdowns to Charlie Kohler, the third string tight end. There's a second string tight end and likely a first string tight end. There's so many names. Uh, Rashad Bateman's there, but three tight ends that they're throwing to. Uh, none of them get a lot of volume. And the same thing happens with Zay Flowers. Zay Flowers, probably, you know, the, the best of all of the options, but he's also priced a little high. Zay Flowers rarely gets you more than 20 um, DraftKings points. He's only uh, FanDuel points. He's only averaging 10 points per game, 77 K. Basically, he's he's overpriced for his usual production. So if you're forcing that stack, you're forcing a stack where it's not the best stack. It's just like being forced. And I don't mind the idea of going naked Lamar in some lineups as well. Jaden Downs, the other side of that game. Jaden has been spectacular. And we just saw last week the um, – Bengals offense torch Baltimore via the pass so they can be beaten via the pass. They are not unstoppable. Jane Daniels playable a little bit cheaper than Lamar. He's a little more stackable. I would say where you do want to kind of pair him up probably with Terry McLaurin. Um, I don't really trust the other guys there and he could be run naked as well. Jordan Love priced up a little bit this week, but in a great, great matchup, uh, I prefer playing him on Fanduel where on DraftKings, I'm sorry, where he's kind of priced more amongst the other quarterbacks. He's not priced above the other guys but uh jordan love is the most expensive of sort of the secondary group here and rightfully so um love double stacks in this game seem like the way to go even though arizona has been more of a team that you want to run on than throw on so technically we'll keep an eye on josh jacobs as well jalen hurts uh will be getting his weapons back for this game so you know, we'll do without what we will, but this does feel a little bit like a defense and Saquon Barkley game to me. So I'm not going there with Hertz this week. Um, CJ Stroud, again, low total game should be fine, but this doesn't seem like the spike spot on the road to me. Um, Joe Burrow at the Giants, maybe. Crushed it last week. If the Giants make a game of this, Joe Burrow is probably making even more of a game of it. So that's a, that's a solid maybe. One of my favorites, though, this week is going to be Dak Prescott at home taking on the Lions. Again, I talked about it at the beginning. The Lions stopped the run. That means in order to beat them, you've got to throw for touchdowns against them generally. All right, not always. Generally. Don't at me. But generally, they are number two. Detroit DVOA against the run. We want to throw against these guys. What does Dallas want to do? Uh, Dak going to do? He's going to He's going to sling it. We haven't seen the big game from C.D. Lamb yet this year. Is this the week? I think it might be. I think it might be. If not, you know, they have Tolbert and Ferguson. There are some cheaper options to stack them with. I'm stacking Dak with two of his pass catchers this week. 
I'll be all over that in single entry and all kinds of formats. So I could very comfortably start this lineup with Dak Prescott. But we're getting a little crazy. We're going to go controversial on the first look today. So bear with me. Bear with me. We're getting controversy. Risky, scary stuff coming. But of course, I always want to let you know, make sure you hit me up in the in the comments. If you think I'm crazy, let me know. But also, who's your favorite QB to start your, your FanDuel lineup with this week? I'm trying to be, are you in a league with your buddies? The 20-man league? Um, who are you playing? Who are you rolling with? Do you have the uh, the cajones to pay down? Or are you just going to say, YOLO, I'm going to pay up for Lamar? Where are you going at quarterback this week in your 20 mans, in your small contest, and in the Millie Maker? If you're going to get silly for the Millie, get crazy with it, where are you going? Let me know in the comments. All right, continuing on, we've got um, Baker Mayfield. Uh, yeah, I would say he's very playable at New Orleans as well. Uh, New Orleans going to maybe have the backup quarterback in there, so... Again, we got to adjust some thinking for that one. It's still early in the week, but I'm just kind of assessing what's going on there. But Baker Mayfield's been fine. Um, usually New Orleans has been decent at stopping Mike Evans in particular. Um, they've done a good job of that over the years. So I think it's more of a Godwin and Kate Otten type situation, but we'll have to see. Kyler Murray at the Packers. Um, I like that Murray is kind of in the sevens here, coming down in price a little bit, averaging uh, around 19 fantasy points per game this season. Not bad, not bad. But the thing about Murray is he rarely gives you a smash game. He'd need about 24 points, 24 to 30 points here to kind of pay off. And I think he could probably get that done. But again, the Packers are really good on the secondary and they're the kind of team you really want to run against. So uh, James Conner might be the better way to attack the Packers defense. Detroit at Dallas, Jared Goff, um, you know, it's a team loaded with talent. He's averaging 17 fantasy points per game. We don't want these under 20 scores ever, um, especially if we're paying up close to 8K uh, for a quarterback. And, you know, I was really wrong before. A quarterback on FanDuel really probably does need to get four. Even though the rest of the players were only looking for 3X, at quarterback, I think we're still, we still want to look for 4X type performances if we can get them. And, you know, Goff rarely does that. In order for him to get there, yes, I mean, Detroit is set to score. Four, three, four touchdowns in this game. Like the the total 29, the team total implies four touchdowns. The thing of it is, with the Lions, 50% of the touchdowns have gone to the running back. So unless Jared Goff can get three of those touchdowns off of his arm, he's not going to pay off on this price. He is a, um, let's put it this way, he's a lower floor than you'd like to see on a team with such a high total because of all those running backs. Justin Fields in this spot against Las Vegas. Not really popping for me. I think um, Pittsburgh dominates with their defense here and running game. So I'm probably going to be looking at Najee Harris. Uh, not necessarily excited about Justin Fields in a game like that. Kirk Cousins, uh, yeah, it's 7,400. Interesting against Carolina. Carolina defense is terrible against all positions. So it's just something we want to keep an eye on, right? I don't mind the Cousins double stacks. Obviously, it smashed last week. Look what Cousins did last week. But that was his only real, I mean, the 39-pointer is insane. It's crazy. But he threw the ball 58 times for 500 yards. The whole rest of the season, it hasn't been like that. So will, will, that, will it revert back to the mean? Or will he do another massive 300-plus yarder? You know, it's probably going to revert back to the mean, but, you know, the possibilities are after 7,400, I'll definitely build some tournament cousin stacks. No, no, no. Andy Dalton, can you play Dalton? I say no. Richardson, do we think he's going to even play? Slated to practice, limited, but so I guess if, you know, if Richardson plays, I'll have some mild interest in him, you know, just going back to it. See if he can. Um, I think Richardson has that upside at 7,300. I'm gonna, I'm, I'll play him if he plays. I'm playing, but the name I want to talk about the controversy Daniel Dimes, aka Danny Jones, coming off a solid game, did not have, um, did not have Malik Neighbors, didn't need Malik Neighbors, got you 22 fantasy points on the back of uh, 257 passing yards, two passing touchdowns. Um, did not even run for a touchdown to get the 22. Now, why am I interested in Danny Jones? 
Look at his rushing attempts. I mean, this guy runs the football most weeks. It doesn't always um, result in massive yardage, but I think these numbers are improving. And at some point, we're going to get that pop game where he runs for, you know, 70, 80 yards and gets the touchdown. I love Malik Neighbors. I think he's going to be, you know, a top three. Or I think he's already a top five wide receiver in the NFL. He has shown that he was the gem of the uh, draft class this year in terms of the wide receivers. He's already there. Daniel Jones has that repertoire and rapport with um, Wondell Robinson already, and he can run it a little bit. And it's a great matchup for the Giants passing offense. It's They're at home. The Bengals can score. The Bengals don't have the great defense. They're allowing uh, the fourth most fantasy points per game to opposing quarterbacks. I say we plug in Danny Dimes for our first look this week. YOLO. Why not? Obviously, there's a lot of other quarterbacks that we like and that we've identified, especially in the payup zone here. But I think it's even more fun to pay down um, at the price of 6800 we're really 714, 21, 28. So, I mean, about a 20 is acceptable for a return. But if we can get closer to 25, 28 fantasy points, which, you know, he's only averaging 15. So it would have to be a nice little spike game for, for Danny Jones. But if we can get there, I think we are in position to win some big tournaments this week. So YOLO, like I said. Um, there's one more quarterback. Uh, I guess Aiden O'Connell against Pittsburgh wouldn't want anything to do with that. And um, yeah, that's about it. So Danny Jones, starting quarterback for a FanDuel week one first lineup, uh, first look lineup. Let's take a look at the running back position. Now, one of the things I mentioned before, th the Browns have been amazing versus the pass and equally bad against the run. So Saquon Barkley stands out at 9,200 as a smash play. The only thing really working against him is just, I don't think Cleveland is going to have that much uh, firepower to cause the Eagles to continue to push the pedal to the metal, but that actually might favor Saquon Barkley. Um, so I love Barkley. I love Derrick Henry as well. Similar situation. Baltimore, um, just at home, Henry's a beast. Washington worse versus the run than the past this year. That is absolutely spot I want to attack. So I think we can pick one of these two as our starting point. We'll plug Saquon in there in a perfect matchup. Why not? Um, Kamara's okay. More of a DraftKings play for me most weeks. Um, but I don't like the situation with the quarterback in New Orleans. So I'm probably going to stay away in any sort of lineup where I, you know, I think the Saints could get blown out here. So I'm not touching that basically. Um, let's take a look at what it says here about Derek Carr as I'm just kind of expected to miss multiple games. So there we go. I've got to put a bet on this game before people realize that some random backup, who the hell's the backup quarterback? Stetson Bennett. Let's just take a look here. Who's the backup quarterback? Uh, Spencer Rattler. There it is. The Rattler. Strong candidate to start. Fifth round pick. Hasn't played. I mean, this is crazy, right? That is not a good scene. So um, I want to go get the hell away from anything to do with the Saints and Spencer Rattler. That is just not somebody that I'm going to put any kind of trust in um, as of this second. Of course, I'm going to do some research and see if maybe there's some reason to have interest in him, but as of right now, no. Running backs, Bijan Robinson, thirty, uh, the the worst run defense in the league, the Panthers. Bijan gets them. Can he get it done? Let me know in the comments. Can he get it? Could, should we go back to Bijan one more time? Not in this lineup. We're not doing that. Not at this price. He's priced way too close to Barkley and Henry. Um, I don't like it at all. If he was priced down appropriately, I mean, the guy's averaging 11 fantasy points per game, and he's hanging out in a zone with, with players that are averaging 20, and he's at 11? No. No. GPP only 
and maybe, you know, GPP only, but not in any kind of lineup that you're hoping to win. Um, Jonathan Taylor still out. Probably a decent spot if he comes back. Mixon still out. Yeah, decent if he comes back, um, I guess. I think we stick, again, with these two studs up top here. James Conner, uh, 8K, playable. Packers attackable via the run, more so than the pass, so of some interest. Montgomery, touchdown guy, scores a lot of touchdowns, and Gibbs. Neither one of them have that probably um, tournament-winning upside because they're splitting 15 touches apiece, but they both kind of give you solid scores, 17, 16. This is what you should almost expect. These guys have not been fluctuating and getting you like 15 to 18 fantasy points apiece. The problem is we need about 24 uh, from either of them to make them worth rostering in tournaments. So I'll probably avoid them at this price, but I think they have high floors and both are kind of cash viable. Josh Jacobs um, paying down a little bit. Again, Arizona, very attackable via the run. So Jacobs is it going to be in the mix. Got to put him in the mix. Uh, we got Najee Harris priced up off of a dud. I don't get, why are they pricing him up? Because they know the matchup is great. It's great for Pittsburgh defense. Uh, eventually Najee's going to get in the end zone. He can get you 20. He needs about a 20, 22. Um, he hasn't done it yet this year. I have to check his ownership to see how interested I'm going to be. But in these pay-up option zone, uh, I do have to allow for the possibility of playing Najee there. I, one guy I do like a lot, though, is right now is Tony Pollard at 7K against the Colts. Colts are the worst run defense. The problem with the Titans is they're so terrible, just generally as a team, and uh, their offense is so bad that it's hard for Tony Pollard to get scoring opportunities. But one thing I will say about Pollard is he is the clear-cut number one guy. I mean, 22, 17, 16, um, targets have been there. So this is the guy who's getting the lead role as much as they want to talk about, you know, Taji Spears or whatever. It has been the Tony Pollard uh, experience. Ramondre, I mean, I told you guys last week not to worry about Ramondre. He was going to play the game. The whole suspension thing was uh, was just nonsense. We knew it. It was just a punishment. He was always going to play, and he got it done. He actually had a great game last week, but the Patriots were favored in that one. Here, again, they're going to come in as big underdogs against the Houston team that could torch them. I do like the dynamic, though, of the new quarterback. I think with Drake May in there, they're a little more dynamic. I don't mind going back to Ramondre here. I don't. Got to see what the story is with the injury, um, but I really don't mind going back to him. There aren't going to be too many bargain options here. J.K. Dobbins, tough matchup against Denver. Could probably get it done, but, you know, I'll be hesitant on that one. Rashad White, price coming down. Bucky Irvin, stepping in, getting a lot of the work. But I will say this for Rashad White. He had, like, his best game of the year, basically, on lower volume last week. So maybe having that competition spark something in him. I, I don't mind the spot at 6,300 for Rashad White. So we'll keep that in mind this week. Um, Rico Daddle, tough matchup. I already talked about Detroit. They have a great run defense. Um, this shows sixth overall, but they're better than that. So um, with Rico Dowdle, yes, I love him as a player, and I, I do like him rest of the year. I'm not sure this is the week. I'm not sure if this is the week to get on him against uh, a really high-end Detroit defense uh, against the run. But again, he is very playable at this price. There's not that many viable running backs at this price. He's one of them. Yeah, Javante Williams, I don't mind pairing him up a little bit with Denver defense. He had about his best game um, that he's going to have last week. Got six targets, five receptions. Did really well. I think Bo Nix playing better is going to continue to help Javante Williams week after week. Um, so he's of interest, I would say. Jav um, Tyrone Tracy. You know what? If this guy starts for the Giants again, 18 carries, 129 yards, couple of targets. If he's the starter for the Giants, even with Danny Dimes, I think he's playable at 5,800. I played him last week. He, he was amazingly low-owned, considering that um, you know he was a starting running back for, I think last week it was like 5K. He was a great bargain last week. I played 30% of him, and it really worked out nicely. Looking through the rest of the running back group here, a Madison starting, but a brutal matchup. Don't like it. Um, Dare. Dare is really interesting because people think it's Cam Akers who is the starter. Is it? I don't really know because it looks like Dare, 15 carries, uh, seven targets, six receptions last week, whereas Cam Akers 
only got like 10 carries. I think it's Dare who's the starter. I think it's Dare who's the better play. Nine carries, a couple targets. So I don't know. Neither one of them is getting a ton of work. Where were we? Dare. Um, anybody else? Uh, Algier, maybe Chase Brown. Yeah, maybe, maybe. I'm not, uh, don't cross these guys off your list. Chase Brown, you know, putting up monster games 14 and 22 over the last couple of weeks. Um, he's very, very inexperienced. I don't actually, I kind of like that. You know what? Let's go with Chase Brown. Let's do the bring back. Let's do the bring back option. I love it. Look at this. Dimes, the bring back of Chase Brown. This is coming together to be a real DFS lineup right now. Um, we're going to, Plug in Malik, of course, right there. But before, of course, we get to the rest of the wide receivers, I like to um, I like to go to defense and tight end, get a feel for everything. We're generally going to use a flex running back on FanDuel, not a flex wide receiver. Of course, DFS Freak used the wide receiver down there. Definitely helped help take it down last week, but still the, the reality remains that it's better to use running backs on FanDuel in the flex. They just score more touchdowns and this format does reward that. Although again, the new scoring from FanDuel this year with the bonuses added for hundred yards has lessened the effect of that just a smidge. So we get those wide receivers over hundred yards, kind of just as good almost as a, as a running back um, getting a touchdown. All right. So let's take a look at the, defenses for NFL week six. And, and the one I'm looking for, so, you know, no, right. No Panthers, no giants, although maybe, but no, right. Patriots, no Cowboys, no Cardinals, no commanders. No. So we're paying a little more Browns. No Bucks, Yes. Spencer Rattler or whatever the hell his name is. No Derek Carr. We're playing Bucks defense. We're taking on the inexperienced quarterback. There aren't a lot of um, great uh, defenses to play unless you're paying up a ton. So uh, this makes sense. I would include Colts defense. Every defense against Will Levis is playable. So Colts defense is going to be in play as well. I would say Baltimore at home, fine, but I'm not sure I want to pay up for anybody against Jaden Daniels. Um, Titans, yes. Very playable if Richardson is the is the quarterback. So at 4,300, I'll be interested in them. Denver, sure, at 4,700. Why not? Eagles, yes, definitely. Love Eagles. They'll be a, a kind of a build around defense for me and Texans against the rookie. But we're going to plug in the box here. Let's take a look and see how much salary we have remaining. Quite a bit. So let's continue on. Let's grab a tight end. And we'll fill out the rest of the three spots. So we're going to do the whole tight end position group. Start at the top. Again, if you're enjoying this video, hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Let me know your favorite QBWR stack for NFL week one. And I also really want to get a sense of, is there a running back that I kind of crossed over or I didn't think much of that you think a lot of? Do you have some reason why you're excited about uh, a particular running back? Let me know in the comments. Get me on the player. Convince me, convince me, Kev, you got to play this guy. And here's the reason. Give me some DVP numbers. Give me something. You guys are like, I'm not giving you that. That's why I watched the video. So you give me that shit. All right. Well, that's cool too. But I do enjoy um, your comments. I read them. And sometimes you get me on a player that I wasn't on. Like, I'm like, yeah, you know what? I like that. And then I play it. And then if I win, I'll say, hey, I saw it in the comments. I'll probably forget who commented it. But if you comment a few times, maybe I'll even remember. All right. Um, continuing on. Uh, tight end position, NFL, week six. Uh, top of the list, uh, Dallas Goddard. You know, I don't really get this. Uh, Eagles are getting all their guys back. So, I, I, uh, no. Right? Brock Bowers coming off a smash week. Not a good spot for, like, the Raiders against Pittsburgh. But Bowers is so good. And he is just on the upswing. So love me some Bowers. Maybe not this week, but he smashed last week. There's no doubt about it. Trey McBride. Um, also, always a strong play. Getting the targets. Hasn't really gotten the touchdowns yet. So we're not seeing those big scores from him. I just think that's coming. It's it's coming. 
Is it this week? Maybe. Packers bleeding points to opposing tight end. So I don't mind paying uh, 6,500 for him. Sam Laporta, I think, again, his day is coming too. And I don't mind hitting paying 6,300 for him in this uh, amazing game environment. I love it. So very easy to plug him in if we'd like. Um, Sam Laporta, go right back to it. His price has come down. Listen, this is a guy who was 8K week one. So it's like, oh, he's killing my lineups. He's not killing your lineups as much down to 6,300. Ferguson, love that one too. Um, love, love the Ferguson play because, hey, he gets a lot of targets every day. He is locked into the targets. Um, seven targets, six, seven, seven, 11, six. The targets have been there for Ferguson. Fergie. Fergie. Last week's star was Tucker Craft. Um, he was my core play at tight end, and it paid off, but I don't like chasing it. Um, I think Tucker Craft's still a good play this week, but he's not getting two touchdowns again, or or it just feels a little chasey to go back to that one. Pitts playable, likely playable. Briarmouth, fine. Andrews could win win you a tournament this week. He is set up to win us a tournament this week. Or get a zero. One or the other. But Andrews could win us a tournament. Or you can get us a zero. Wow, that's a big range of events, Kev. Which one do we do? I don't know. Let's see here. Kate Otten playable. I really like the Kate Otten play. But now with, with New Orleans having no quarterback, I'm, I'm more concerned about it. Wouldn't it be cool? You know what would be great? I'm just thought, thinking about it. If instead of Spencer Rattler... If let's say Taysom Hill was healthy and they said we're starting Taysom at the QB position for the next few weeks, that's what I'd love to see. They're not going to do it. They're not going to give us that beautiful thing. But imagine if they did and we could play Taysom Hill 6,200 as a tight end who is a quarterback. If that does happen, we're going 100% Tay Tay all day Tay Tay. But he's out. He's questionable. Ribs. I don't think they're going to do that. So it's going to end up being Rattler. And that ruins it. With that being said, um, a couple other interesting potential tight ends that we could play uh, down here. Hunter Henry with with Drake May coming in as the quarterback for the uh, Patriots. You know, younger quarterbacks tend to throw more to the tight end position. I think Zach Ertz, you know, he's come close to some big plays this year. Um, it's a good spot for him as well for 5K. So if we really, really need to save the money, uh, Theo Johnson, man, yeah, not really. Charlie Kohler, no, no, we're not chasing that. So, um, with that being said, though, I don't mind if we really were desperate going all the way down to Zach Ertz or Hunter Henry. But for the purpose of this video, let's plug in. Uh, I think Sam Laporta, I, I don't mind Ferguson, it's between these two. You know, let's go Laporta at, at 6,300. He's cheap enough that at some point he's got to pay, at some point he's got to pay off. A lot of options there. Tough to be right at the tight end position this season. Actually, Trey McBride might be. You know what? Let's go safer with McBride because he's getting targets every single week. So let's go a little safer. We'll roll with McBride in a good matchup. Opponent bleeding points to the tight end position. Now, jumping over to wide receiver. And by the way, let me know. Who's, do you have a tight end you love this week? Hit me up in the comments. Let me know. Um, all right. Wide receiver. We already plugged in Malik Neighbors. He's going to be in there with Daniel Jones. Now, I'd love to double down and just go crazy with some Jamar Chase in there as well, but you just can't afford um, two 9K players on the same lineup on FanDuel. It's just not going to work from a salary perspective. Let me see how much we have left here. Um, yeah, so it's not going to work. I'm down to 5,400 left per player. There's not enough salary to do it. So as much as I'd love to plug Chase in there, you can't have Chase, Neighbors, and Saquon in the same lineup. We could make it work if we kind of dropped off of Saquon and did something else, or even maybe if we went down to one of those 5K tight ends, which might not be the worst idea to do. Just take the you know 5K tight end and punt it. But there are lots of really good wide receiver plays that we can attack this week at all salary levels, so we'll go through that. We're going to play Malik, though, for sure, pairing him up with... Daniel Jones. Uh, again, I don't even mind in, in the flex if we put Tyrone Tracy in there and went crazy on the Giants. So, you know, if we really wanted to build a beautiful tournament lineup, 
we could go Tyrone Tracy, and he's a bit of a pass catching running back down there. And then how much would we have left here? 7,300 and could play a couple studs there. So that is not the end of the world, and that's very doable. But I'd rather actually get another studly running back in there if we can. So we're going to look for some bargains at the wide receiver position, and we'll just talk them all through. So again, Collins is out this week. Amon Ross certainly very much in play. And I love CeeDee Lamb in this spot. I love him as well. Happy to play him. Happy to load him up. But we'll, we'll use him in our Dak Prescott lineup. So love that. Evans, I usually don't like against the Saints, so I'm going to avoid that one. A.J. Brown coming back, but in a non-competitive game environment, so probably not somebody I'm going to uh, look to try to force into lineups. Stefan Diggs without Nico Collins should be better. He should continue to improve and kind of become more studly each week, but he's still priced. He's fully priced in as if he is already a super stud, so I don't love that. Um, Jaden Reed, though, He's getting it done without a ton of volume. Love that situation. 7,700, reasonably priced, but still, um, you know, he is quite an impressive player. He's either winning you a tournament or kind of disappointing because the volume isn't there. Look at the volume. As good as Jaden Reed has been, six targets, eight, six, six. So he's had to get it done with six targets. The other big game came on eight. These are low target numbers for a uh, wide receiver. He just has such good yak ability. I think of, um, I think of Reed kind of like, uh, Debo Samuel. It doesn't take as many targets for a guy like that to get it done a lot of the time. T. Higgins coming off the big game last week, but those are few and far between for T. Higgins as a player. You can see that was kind of his only good performance so far this year. I'm not ready to pay up 7,600 for that. Godwin is in a very good spot. Too expensive. Drake London, acceptable at 7,400. Touchdown score, everything, nothing not to like about London here, so we'll keep him in our mix. Zay Flowers is somebody I really only want to use with um, Lamar Jackson. Chris Olave is just not, uh, no, not interested. Uh, Marvin Harrison would not work in a Trey McBride lineup. Um, standalone play at 7K, yes. Notice how different Harrison is on FanDuel compared to DraftKings where he's priced up with the studs. He's not that. He belongs in the second tier group. So they're a little more correct on pricing him here on FanDuel compared to DraftKings. Deontay Johnson, I like him much more as a DraftKings play, much more of a DraftKings guy for me. Uh, Terry McLaurin in play as well. Uh, you know, again, this is a game to build around. Terry McLaurin's really the only wide receiver on his team that is somebody we want to be uh, targeting at all because the other guys are complete trash. So it, it's kind of McLaurin a bust. Tank Dell, 6,700. Man, they priced him up too. I thought we could get a 6K bargain on Dell at least once. They didn't give it to us. He's at 6,700. A little spendy, a little spendy for me, but um, certainly uh, a viable $6,700 uh, play this week. Again, we got 6,800 left per spot. So and it'd be nice if we can f squeeze some savings in here somewhere. Um, Darnell Mooney, yes, uh, playable at 6,500. Rashid Jaheed is a no. Uh, not without a quarterback. Jamison Williams, 6,300. I like that. Now, you might be saying, should I pair up Wandell uh, and double stack with Jones and neighbors? And I think it's doable, but I also don't necessarily think it's necessary. So I'm okay with like double stacking. And you saw last week the double stack with um, Burrow, Higgins, and Chase worked out. So double stacking, great. But if I feel like if Daniel Jones is getting it done for us in this crazy Danny Jones silly for the Millie lineup, he's doing it with his legs. He's got to run for a touchdown to get us there or throw one maybe to a Tyrone Tracy where, where Wondell is much more of the possession wide receiver, especially with neighbors there. So I don't mind it. I don't mind getting him in there and doubling it down. I think it's a perfectly acceptable approach and I'm, I'm good with it. Actually, Let's see if we can find something better, though, at this price. Um, Cooper, he'll win a tournament for us once or twice more this year. He'll be in my mix, but, you know, he stinks. It's Let me put it this way. He doesn't stink. He's good. But he has been dropping passes as well this year. He's not been as good as he normally is. But a lot of that's probably just because having Watson there just messes up with your head because Watson has been so bad. So for me, Cooper in play. Playable, but not someone I'm plugging into this lineup. J Jalen Tolbert is somebody we have to keep an eye on now that Brandon Cooks is out. 
He had a big week last week. He was the nuts play. We were on him last week. Uh, he was on my sheet. I talked about him with no Brandon Cooks. Of course, um, you know, DFS Freak was able to use the Jalen Tolbert play to win 70K. So that's awesome last week, right? Um, so Tolbert is very much in play and playable at 6,100. I like the spot. I'm going to plug him in here. But I, there's so many more um, pay down options at wide receiver this week that allow us to do a lot of different things. Let's see how much we have left if we plug him in. 8K, right, for the flex. Now, if we wanted to get to a super stud in the flex, uh, I think we got to get a little more, squeeze a little more out of here. So I, I'd love to get up to even one of, even this, even this zone. So if we could squeeze, I don't know if we're going to get there. We probably won't get there. We'd have to squeeze another thousand, which would require dropping the tight end down. So if we drop the tight end down to one of the $5,500 guys, we can get there. Um, but let's continue to look at the wide receivers and see what's available. Sub 6K here. So Ridley, no. You know, Dontavian Wicks, yes. Okay. Um, I have a feeling that there's one name that I kind of like. I feel is a little sneaky. Oh, we'll get to it. But Dontavian Wicks, 6K, maybe. Darius Slayton, also maybe, right? Slayton is the WR3. Had a big week last week. And another player that I was on actually last week with Malik Neighbors out. Now, Neighbors is back. So what's going to happen with Slayton? He'll go back to the WR3 role. But he is a big playmaker. And as a matter of fact, I think even though Wandale is more likely to get more targets, Slayton is more likely to get a touchdown. So again, if I want to double stack Jones, it might actually be Slayton with Neighbors. That's the better combo. Neighbor, But Neighbors is in there either way, right? Fine. So I switched it. Okay, whatever. Michael Wilson, no, eh, not really. Xavier Leggett, meh, right? Hopkins, not unexciting. Um, Alec Pierce had the monster game with Flacco. Man, I had Flacco with everybody except for Alec Pierce last week. What a bummer. Uh, what a game he had, though. But it came all on the back of just three targets, and that is what Alec Pierce is. He's going deep, catching bombs. That's uh, Now, he could get it done again with R Richardson. He plays that kind of role. So I, I'm not going to play him here, but just a note, noteworthy player. Jacoby Myers going up against um, Joey Porter Jr. That's a big no-no. But one player I do want to highlight. I got a weird feeling about Romeo Dubs this week. You know, he got this weird suspension because he was complaining last week or whatever it was. But the reality is Watson remains out. Dubs is supposedly the WR2. Dontavian Wicks showed last week that he couldn't really get it done in the role. Um, you know, when the targets don't go to Jaden Reed, maybe it's going to go to Dubs. So at 5,700, I'm telling you, Romeo Dubs is somebody that I will be using a little bit in my tournament play this week just for that upside. Um, again, as long as Christian Watson's out, I think he can make a, he can make some big plays. So I'm interested in him this week, and he will be in my mix. Um, anybody else of interest here? Not really. Uh, this is a bad matchup for uh, for Ray Ray. I guess Yoshi Voss, if we wanted to do some crazy, like bring back from this game and go with kind of a turdly wide receiver, he'd be okay. No, nothing really super exciting. I mean, Demario Douglas might be the WR1 for uh, the Patriots at 5K. So that's going to have some slight, hold some slight interest as well. Um, that's about it, though, for the wide receiver position, which leaves us, let's see, around 8,400 for the flex. That is not quite enough to get to the stud zone up here. Kind of leaves us in a weird uh, place where, sure, I could play some James Conner, but I think we can get much, much better off if we're, if we can squeeze another thousand out. So, how do we squeeze another thousand? We've already built sort of a low cost lineup. The only way to do it is going to be to save some salary at tight end. We talked about some names. So, why as well? You know what? Let's go to Mark Andrews here. Save a thousand tournament upside. There's a lot of tournament upside plays. These are touchdown scorers. They haven't been scoring a ton. If it's not Mark Andrews, maybe Dalton Schultz with fewer targets there or Kate Otten, you know, whatever. It can even go to Ertz and just kind of acceptable tight end play. Actually, let's go all the way down to Ertz. Let's see if, if we can make it happen here. 9,900. So in the flex here, at that point, we could play Lamb, Chase, or Derrick Henry. We can go anywhere we like. Um, let's go with Henry. See again how much salary we have left over. Go back to tight end. 
and this is how you make a lineup, right? Like, I was looking for these different possibilities where the math kind of works itself out. I'm actually, what if we pull like Tolbert out? If I go, if I go tight end all the way back down again to like a Zach Ertz, he gets targets each week. He's not doing great, but he's getting a few targets. Probably a a more neutral play needs a touchdown. But at that point, we can upgrade the last wide receiver to somebody maybe a little bit better here, like a Terry McLaurin. Boom. Also have the possibility again, going from Slayton up back to Tolbert or doing something like that. If we had enough, well, we didn't quite leave enough there, but could do that as well. But I like the double stack here. So, all right, final. Well, you know what? We got Chase Brown in there. You know what I could do here in the, in the flex? Just see. I can go Derrick Henry as well. So um, the flex, we can go with Derrick Henry and just double stud. I almost could get to Jamar Chase, though, in that previous one. So, you know, I could play. We can build a full game stack around that Giants game, both sides, um, which puts us on, let's say, let's put it, let's go Jamison Williams here again. So let me just, let me just break this down. We've got a full night game stack on FanDuel here, right? Danny Jones stacked with Slayton and neighbors, keeping in mind that Wandale and Tyrone Tracy are also totally acceptable stack pieces with a Daniel Jones build. This is going to be super low owned. No one's doing this. I don't think, I mean, it's early in the week. I expect it to be very low. owned. We've brought it back with chase Brown and Jamar chase, double chase. You got to double chase. You can't do one chase. You got to do two chases right now. I can switch this and put chase Brown in over here. Jamar chase. I'm sorry. In over there and then use the flex spot. We have Jameson Williams in there, but I can also now um, shift over to a running back if I wanted in the flex. At tight end, we just went with a solid, safe Zach Ertz. Pay down option should get some targets. On defense, I love Tampa. Love Tampa. Um, the reason we like uh, Jameson here is simply because this Detroit Dallas game is a game to load up on. But again, I think this is a better spot to kind of look for a running back uh, instead. So I'm generally going to prefer putting running backs in my flex on FanDuel. So maybe we'll throw Rashad White. In there. Whatever. Is there anywhere else I could save? No. Pretty weak running back group, but it's made up for by having Saquon, by having Jamar Chase, super stud, Malik Neighbors, super stud. So a lot of studliness mixed in this lineup. This is a tournament build. This is a tournament build, double stack, double bring back, building around the night game. This is the kind of lineup where you're going into the night game, Sunday night football, and you're like, I'm toast. All right, I, I, well, I, none of my lineups look good. Oh, man, I must have messed up. And then you forgot that you built this Sunday night football super stack. Sunday night football goes crazy. And you just fly up the leaderboards, riding up the boards, first place. So that's going to do it for our NFL Week 6. First look at FanDuel. Of course, we went a little wild with the stack here using Danny Dimes. But there's so many ways to build lineups this week that are going to look good. Build around Lamar. Build around Jordan Love. Easy double stacks. Build around Joe Burrow. Dak. Big time Dak. Big time Dak week. Um, so a lot of different ways to build on FanDuel for NFL Week 6. Um, let's get a little silly with it, though, and build a Jones tournament stack. Good luck this week, everyone. Uh, again, reminder that um, we have our NBA is back promotion going. Promo code NBA24 gets you a full 12 months of NBA coverage at DFS Army, full uh, Discord, Optimizer, Ownerships. The notes and the news in our Discord is second to none. That alone is worth the price of the membership. We have up to the second news uh, news breaks being done in our Discord. A player's out. Who's replacing them? How does it affect the game? No one else does this. No one else does it in real time the way DFS Army does. We have a full-time staff just doing that to deliver you guys the information at the fastest possible time because we know for NBA, speed of, of updates is the most important thing. Of course, DFS Army just named the most accurate projection model for NFL for the first uh, 
five weeks through the first five weeks of the season. Pretty good. Let's see if we can keep it going all year, but we're going to be doing the same for NBA. So stick around, check that out. And of course, hit that like button. Make sure you're subscribed. We have a ton of content coming out here. Tournament tactics on Fridays, 5 p.m. The round table, Bobby Millions, uh, Burns, Josiah, and myself break down our thoughts on the NFL main slate with the benefit of all the research that goes in through the week. So we got our first looks early and then later in the week, tournament tactics to bring it all together. For DFS Army subscribers, um, we have all of the behind the paywall breakdowns as well, including the Players Club on Saturdays at one o'clock where we build lineups for FanDuel together. Good luck this week, everybody. I will see you on top of the leaderboards. Hit us up in the comments section. Let us know who your favorite stacks are on FanDuel for NFL Week 6. Take care.